Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem once again and we're back in Foundry VTT. Uh, we are in our third world. Um, this is our clean world, not the one that we've been building our adventures in. Uh, it's the same one we used in a previous video where we were looking at MIDI QOL. Uh, and the reason we're doing this in the clean world is we did quite a lot in our live world, if you like, to... Um, playing with macros and defreds and sequencer and things like that. And what I don't want to do is to get the, um, the settings and stuff that we've done in those ones interfering when we're looking at a completely different way of approaching some of those same problems, i.e. MIDI QOL. So we're going to be looking at MIDI QOL again in this video. Um, important thing to note, somebody did point it out in the comments and I really should have said, at the moment, if the um, the normal available version of MIDI QOL is not working with the um, D and D game engine 3.0.3 uh, right at this minute, so what I've got installed here is the beta version of it. So it's still a work in progress. Obviously, they need the they need it to settle down for the 3.0 game engine version so that the MIDI QOL can also settle down to make sure it functions correctly with that. So they're both kind of having little adjustments and stuff at the moment. However, um, the main functions of MIDI QOL are not, are not intended to change as part of that. It's only a case of making tweaks so that it remains compatible, uh, if that makes any sense. So um, on the screen here at the moment, we've got our list of all of our modules that we're actually using for this, not changed from the previous video, with one exception, which is DDB Importer. Um, and the only reason why I added that is so that I can pull from D&D Beyond my uh, Nundro, uh, Haley, Sorryman, and our new friend here, what's his name? It's uh, Ronbar, um, our wizard. Because in the previous video, we used some basic, very low level characters for that initial look. What I want to do in this is do something slightly more complex. I want to, again, going to run a bit of a combat with these guys. But these, these guys have got a better range of different things we can try. So we've got some melee combat, versatile weapons. We've got ranged combat. We've got um, offensive spells, defensive spells, status effect spells. Uh, we've got rage. We've got a whole bunch of different things across these four characters, which makes them more useful to run kind of a test with um, so you, you might choose to skip this video because it's like well the first one helped enough but part of what I want to do here is to examine a bit more closely some of the settings in MIDI QRL and start to nail down what those settings are that I actually want for my game and which settings it is that does what because there's a lot of them we saw that in the previous video <coughs> excuse me so let's um, let's crack on. I'm going to select all these guys. I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to hit the combat thing. So now we have them all in combat. And we don't have our combat carousel in. So I'm going to right click on my little combat encounters thing there to pop that window out so that I can have my chat window open as well as my combat here. <clears throat> let's jump. Oh, I'm really croaky today. I do apologize. I'm going to jump straight to um, start combat, except I didn't roll initiative, did I? let's let's do that again <laughs> right click add to combat roll initiative thank you very much now I'll begin combat I'm just whizzing through it so it's automatically rolled initiative for everybody using their individual character sheet stats for that and we can see that Soriman's going first so let's just move these over slightly zoom them in slightly so let's open Soriman's character sheet over here on the left <clears throat> and what I want to start with is some of the basic things. What we're going to do is pretty much Soriman um, and um, Ronbar versus Haley and Nundro over here. Just really, really basically. So I want to make sure I've got Soriman selected because it's his go. Uh, and it looks like we've accidentally already got uh, targeted Haley. So let's go for that. And let's start with a really basic melee attack quarterstaff. So nothing happened in our chat just then. Uh, across the top of the screen, it's just gone now. If you look again, just across the top of the middle of the screen, orange bar comes up that says, Sorry, Man the Wide's target is 25 feet away and your range is only five. So immediately it's blocking us from making that melee attack because we're not in melee range for this weapon. So you might have um, you know, a pole arm that gives you 10 foot reach. It should still give us that issue here. Um, 
because we're too far away. That's good. It blocks that. So, I mean, obviously you might have a magic weapon that for some reason gives you additional reach or something, but that would be in that item because it, what it's picking up is actually from the item description. If I go to edit here in details, um, you can see here, just right in the middle here, I hope you can see the box is flashing, the range is five. So it's <clears throat> that's what it's using to make that judgment. Okay, I'm gonna clear that chat, get, just get rid of those initiative. We're gonna move Soriman over so he is within range and let's hit that quarter staff again. Okay, so now in chat, because MIDI QOL is automating a bunch of stuff for us, we've got our quarter staff, we've got our attack button, our damage button and our versatile button. Now the reason we've got a damage and a versatile button, just for those of you who are not sure, because um, it's not necessarily the wording's not necessarily clear. Things like court staff, you can use it one-handed or you can use it two-handed. Now, depending whether you're using one or two, is going to change the damage profile of the weapon. So, and that's what's known as a versatile weapon, the fact that you can choose to use it one or two-handed. Uh, the normal damage button will roll damage for a one-handed attack with that staff. Uh, and the versatile, it will roll the damage for using both hands on it. So this has rolled for us using this quarter staff and it has made our attack roll just underneath there in the chat. We've got a 10, um, which does not hit Haley. So what we would not expect to see is Haley taking any damage and indeed her health bar it seems to be full there. So she's not taking any damage. But there is a slight issue here because it's roll it hasn't applied the damage, but it has rolled the damage it's automatically rolled 1d6 plus 3. So what this has not done is asked me if this is one-handed or two-handed damage. It's just defaulted to one-handed damage. So we'll come back and have a look at that in a moment. But first of all, what we've got on here, we've got these attack button, but it's already made the attack roll for us. We've got damage buttons, but it's already making the damage roll for us. So the question is, is do we need all this? No, no we don't. So first thing I want to do is get rid of this attack button. Let's go to our game settings, configure settings. We want to find MIDI QOL uh, and of course, just go back to the chat over there for you. Um, we've got tons and tons of settings. Now most of our settings are actually within this workflow option up here. So if we click this, uh, try to keep this a little bit cleaner for you. Um, we've now got this configuration here with all of these millions of different <laughs> options but the one we're interested in is actually on the GM one so we've got auto attack roll on this top box um, we've got fast attack on we've got auto damage on um, which just says always um, we've got fast forward damage which just, just means it just gives us the result um, but there's this option here remove chat card buttons after roll now, I think that's what it's referring to here is the chat card buttons. That's what we want to get rid of. So we can remove the attack, the damage, or both. So let's just remove the attack one and make sure that that is correct. That is the right setting. Let's save that. Obviously, it won't update this, but it will on the next term. Now, we'll come back to the normal versus versatile damage in a moment um, because uh, we, that is something we will need to look at. Um, because I guarantee you, Soriman is using two-handed on that, uh, and it didn't apply that. Okay, so first of all, next, Haley's go. So we make sure we select Haley, and Haley's going to choose a target. She's going to choose Soriman. So again, we've got spells. Don't want to go to them just yet, um, but I am going to stick with this mace attack. I've already got in favourites for her. Uh, let's clear the chat. I've got to keep remembering to do that to make sure it's nice and simple for you guys to follow what's doing what. Mace attack, we've targeted Soriman, and there we go. Our attack button has disappeared. So that setting we found is the correct one. We only turned off the attack button, we've still got the damage one. So it's made our attack roll for us, it's checked to see whether that hits him. Although it's rolled the damage and it has applied her modifiers correctly, it's not applied that damage. Soriman's health bar is still full because it wasn't a hit brilliant so we can get rid of this damage thing here because i'm not sure that that's helpful okay we can get rid of that button as well um <clears throat> and at the moment we're not using this card but i'm going to leave them on 
for a moment. Um, we'll come back to why when we get to Nundro's go. Nundro will, will show us what's going on with that and why I'm leaving it for the moment. Okay, right, so Haley, you failed again. We're on to Ronbar. It's okay, so we're selecting our wizard here. Uh, and he's going to attempt to attack Haley. Now, he's at range. He's a wizard, so he's very unlikely to close in to use what weapons he got. A dagger and a crossbow. So let's do a ranged combat attack by using his crossbow. Uh, I'm going to clear that chat log for you. So click his crossbow. Done the crossbow attack. We've still got the damage button. We, we will get rid of that. Um, but look in the middle of the screen here. Look at this pop up right in the middle. So what this is saying is Haley is, is automatically said, oh, Haley has the ability to use one of her skills or spells as a reaction to this. And it is suggesting shield master evasion. Uh, if that confuses you, I'll get back to that in a moment. It's about to time out and disappear by itself. Uh, and if you that went quite quickly, you might want to rewind that. As that disappeared, if you look in the chat, it's now completed the combat. So it's now rolled the damage. So what happened there was we did a range attack against Haley. It made the attack roll. Before doing the damage and resolving that attack, it went, oh, hang on a minute. Haley may be able to react to this. She's got a skill or a spell that she may choose to use. And it gave Haley, obviously we could see it, it gave Haley a prompt screen to say, hey, do you want to use one of these abilities that you have available? She only had one. Do you want to use that in this instance, yes or no? And we had previously, in the previous video, noted that it's set to 30 seconds before that times out. And because I was yabbering on, that 30 seconds timed out. And it, so it went, oh, okay, you haven't said yes, therefore defaulting to no. And then it resolved the rest of the combat. So it resolved the rest of that combat with that roll to hit, which was a 19. You can see this green bar here that says, well, actually her AC was 18, so that is a hit. And it had already rolled the damage of three, and it has applied that to Haley. So you can see her health bar has gone down. So that's all worked really, really nicely. Um, so it's asking, because we turned, we made sure it was turned on, it's asking if she wants to use her reaction. If we don't, it will then resolve combat. If we do, it will um, apply that reaction first. Now, the issue here, our first problem that we've come across is if we look at Haley's um, features and things, Shield Master, um, which is a lovely feat in some ways, it says you can add your shield's AC to any dex saving throw you make against an effect that targets only you. Uh, and if the, your effect allows half damage on success, you can take no damage. Okay, so a single spell that allows a dex check, Haley can use that. This is a crossbow. It's an attack roll. It does not allow a dexterity save because your armor class already takes dexterity in. Therefore, this shield master evasion should not have been a valid reaction to that attack. End of the world? No, but wouldn't it be nice if we can tidy that up a bit? So that's a potential problem we need to look at and see if we can... Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, a... I, don't, I doubt it's a setting. It might be a bug. Remember, MIDI QOL is still being... It's a beta version. So it might be a little bug in there, or it might be something to do with Shield Master Evasion and the way this is set up to be a reaction for certain things that perhaps it shouldn't be. Um, don't know. I might need to ask in the forums for that one because that's probably going to break my brain. And certainly you guys don't want to watch me just sit here and melting through the bottom of my chair trying to work that out. Uh, so is it perfect? No. Is it the end of the world? Really, really not. Okay, so uh, so the attack roll works and the prompts work, although in this case that prompt for reaction wasn't an appropriate one, but I guess it's better that it asks inappropriately rather than doesn't ask when it should. Um, but you can turn that feature off, of course. Right, let's move on. Nundro's turn. Okay, let's clear that chat again. Now, Nundro... Make sure he's selected. He's going to attack Sorryman. We know, just try again, 
just to prove the point. If he attacks with his Warhammer, it won't let us because we're not in within range. Let's move up and attack. So we can make that move. That's not a problem. We've got targeted on Sorimum, and I can roll my Warhammer. So Warhammer is another versatile weapon, one-handed or two-handed. In this case, as it luckily, <laughs> I was hoping it would, um, we've got our roll up here. We haven't got our attack button. We've got our auto attack, which did hit Sorimum. But it has chosen to apply the default one-handed damage. Now, Nundro uses his Warhammer two-handed, so it, we wanted it to do versatile damage, and it hasn't. This is the problem with automating stuff, is sometimes you'd want it to do something differently. So we've got two options here, two different ways that I can immediately can think of to solve this, although hopefully you've got, um, you might have another way. I have previously, I knew this was going to potentially be a problem, I previously looked through the settings and I cannot find anything in the MIDI QOL settings um, that enables me to make that an option. Oh, hang on a minute. If it's a versatile weapon, then ask which damage to roll. If it's not a versatile weapon, just roll anyway. So it could be, actually, I've just thought of another way we can do it. So one thing we could do is turn off the automatic damage roll. We can still do automatic attack roll, and then we can have the damage roll that we want to make ourselves. Now remember, you can have that setting for the game master, or you can have that setting for the player. So it might be for the player, you have that damage. You, I mean, for me personally, I'm not going to have auto rolls for the players. I'm not going to have auto damage and attack. I want them to roll their own dice. Ergo, they're going to get, if you look in chat, damage, versatile, they're going to choose the most appropriate one to roll. Brilliant. When it comes to our monsters, what we could do is two things. In the chat here, this Game Master tab at the bottom, where it's showing us the updated hit points calculation, we have an undo button. So if I click this undo, Soryman's just been healed for the seven damage he did. So it's undone the damage that was applied to him. Then I could click the versatile damage. As it turns out, <laughs> Nundro's done less damage with the versatile, but it's now applied that. So I could use that. I could use that to undo that damage and roll the correct thing. So that's one thing I could absolutely do. That works perfectly. Uh, the other thing that I could do, um, apart from turning off the auto roll damage, is in Nundro's character sheet, what I could do is duplicate this. So I could, whoops, I, I've accidentally just done loads and loads of combat rolls. I didn't want to do those. Just undo those. <laughs> What I could do, right? Uh, I, I've just made a copy. Right click, duplicate. I've now got a copy. Is I could choose to say this is this is a two-handed version of the Warhammer. And then in its details, I could say, well, actually, because it's the two-handed one, its normal damage is going to be the D10. And then in this one, I might change this just to make it clear and say this is the one-handed version of the Warhammer. Um, and under details, I gain. I could change its damage profile. It's 1d8, and I could say, well, actually, it's 1d8 no matter what. Or I could even remove the idea of this versatile damage completely if I wanted to. So I could do that, and then it's really easy for me as the DM, because the player's going to be able to select from his buttons in my game. But if you want your player's roles to be automated, this might be a way that you do this. The only thing you need to bear in mind is now they're carrying two Warhammers, which means they're carrying double the weight. So again, under edit, what you could do under description is you could say, well, actually, it's not, that one's not worth anything and it doesn't weigh anything, all right? <laughs> it's just a, a template that will roll those damage. So you could do that. If you want your auto rolls for your players, possibly, and you saw how quick that was to do that, duplicate it, a couple of little edits, and seriously, how often is Nundro going to change his Warhammer? It might be, you know, every few sessions, I don't know, he, he suddenly then gets a, a Warhammer plus one. Well, actually, it's literally a few moments to duplicate that and make that little change for him. Okay, so that's another way around it. So we can leave that in there and we can do the proof of the pudding of that on his next round. Okay, so that's one way to get around that. 
I'm not even sure if it's much of an issue to be honest, but it's a slight annoyance. We don't want to auto roll the wrong damage. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is go back into our settings. Um, back into our MIDI QOL settings that is and under the game master this remove from here I'm going to remove the attack and damage buttons and the reason I'm removing both is yes it means I can't do that trick of undo damage now re-roll versatile because I've got rid of the <laughs> the button to roll the versatile damage um, so I've removed that but I've created for Nundro a copy of his weapon so he's got a one-handed version and a two-handed version. The player, or me in this instance, just needs to select the right one. Okay. Whew. Okay, so next up, uh, next round. So we are back to Sorryman the Wide. Okay, so Sorryman's going to have the same thing with his quarter staff, but we've just seen that, so I'm not going to do that. So what else can Sorryman do here? Now, he's got features such as Rage. I'm going to make him Rage. So I would like to see some stuff come up in the chat. I would like to see an effect that's placed on him. And I would like to see that reflected in his attack and damage rolls. So click Rage. Brilliant. We've got an animation. He's glowing red now. You saw it pop up to say that he's got that. We've got some condition modifiers on him. He's got a Rage icon. Uh, and what's the other one? Let's look at the uh, effects here. Oh, bonus action. So that is showing because it's tracking his bonus action. He's just used his bonus action. So we can't use it again this round. Okay, so that's what that is. So he's now raging his bonus action. We've got a 10 round timer on here, which times up will count down for us in remove. Um, and we've got a little card up here, which is telling the details of rage, just in case we're not sure. So we're expecting him to get advantage on strength checks now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and plus two to his damage. So... That was his bonus attack, so now he can use his own, his normal attack. And he's going to make that quarter staff attack. Now, I'm okay for this to be one handed. I'm kind of hoping he hits Haley. He didn't. Hold <laughs> on. A seven, that's pathetic. Okay, but he's still raging, that's fine. But we haven't got our attack or damage buttons on here. We've got rid of these now. We've still got this game master tag, um, this one down here with the health. <sighs> Do I want that? Where did we find it to turn that off? Now, it was definitely in here. Now, what's it actually giving us? It's, it's updating for hit points. So I don't want to read through every option for you because it will take us for ages. Let's have a flick through and see if we can remember where that was. I don't think it was on the front here at all. Uh, da, 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 da. Doesn't look like it. Add damage buttons. It's a chat message. Weirdly enough, we've got that left on for everybody, and I think we can turn it off for everybody there as well. But that's okay, we've covered that. <laughs> so many ways to do stuff. Um, okay, so let's look into workflow settings under GM. Is it in there? Fake dice, uh, attack rolls, um, da, 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 GM roll, hidden, remove the buttons, where it's obviously done. Uh, no, it's not in there. <clears throat> um, is it in rules? Unlikely. Mechanics? unlikely um, so we're looking for something that says but you know being able to incapacitate actors taking actions um, check weapon rage when attacking we've seen that in action and there's a couple of different ways you can do this which is good blocking walls calculating cover ability checks show before and after optional bonus chat card auto reroll initiative support items uh, undoing item rolls. Ah, if enabled, MIDI will store uh, undo data for all item rolls uh, not suitable for game time. But, 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 but. Is that it? Undo chat card. Uh, un undo chat cards color. Don't know what that means. Delete means remove the chat card on undo. Is it this support undoing rolls? Is that what that is? I'm not sure. I'm not convinced it is. Um, if we turn off too many things and it works, we won't know which one worked. So let's leave that on for a moment. Okay, back to Haley's go. Make sure we selected Haley. Let's attack Sorryman. Um, no, let's not. Let's do something different. We're going to target 
Nundro and herself. And she is going to cast that our beloved Bless spell. So let me clear the chat. Oops, there we go. Uh, we've got two people targeted, botched the Haley character, boom. So this just applied Bless to Nundro, who was targeted, Haley who was targeted. We can see it popped up the words. We've got their icons on there. Haley's also now concentrating. So it's done all of those for us. And just to confirm, Haley's effects, Bless and concentrating. And we've got our timer on there that will count down. It's given us our stat update in here. Look, we've got the 3.0 effects thing here. We don't need to use that because we've already applied it, which is great. Um, and we've got our Game Master card telling us that Haley's concentrating. So that worked really nicely. Of course, at some point, Haley might get bashed um, and we would expect to see a concentration roll. I'm fairly certain we had that switched on to automatically check for those. <laughs> it's possible we don't. <laughs> Okie dokie. Right. Um, so that's her action. Uh, we're not going to move or anything like that. We're not going to overcomplicate it. But now we're going to go to Rombar's Go. All right. So here we go. Rombar's Go. Let's clear our chats down. Now, what can Rombar do? We've done our uh, we've done our um, crossbow attack. I don't think we need to show that again necessarily. Let's try one of his spells. Something relatively straightforward. Um... Why don't we try Burning Hands? Now, he might want to get a bit closer. Let's move up here a little bit closer, sir. And we're going to cast our Burning hand spell. What we would expect to see is, yes, there's that template came up. Uh, use the mouse wheel. <laughs> For those of you who've watched that video painfully, use the mouse wheel to... Uh, to change the uh, the where that's firing and he's going to be firing it from here in front we don't want to do this because that actually affects him but he's firing it from here and actually he could choose to get everybody but you don't want to do that because he's supposed to be on Soriman's side now can you see the fact that nothing is targeted as we move this over boom they are both become targeted by this spell okay so we've got that auto targeting if they're under templates so I'm going to do that. I'm going to click the button. It's going to put down our nice fiery template for us. Over in the chat, we have cast Burning Hands. Um, <clears throat> it tells us what it does. It is, at this point, it's saying that it's rolled its damage. It's going to inflict nine points of damage, but it's prompted for the dexterity saving throws. Now, remember, Haley has the ability with Shieldmaster to get a bonus on her dexterity saving throws, but only for effects that are targeting just her. So single target effects. This isn't. This is a cone effect. It's affecting more than one. So we would not expect to see that come up here. And in fact, we haven't seen it come up here, which is great. It's just a bit weird that a crossbow bolt triggers that when it shouldn't. So we can um, make that, we know what the DC is. Uh, we can roll these now. It's a normal roll for both of these. And blimey, everything just happened in the chat. <laughs> so if we go back here where we made these rolls, we can see that Nundro Rotsuka rolled a 10. Haley got an 11. Okay. Um, we've got those rolls there that we just did. Just under there, this is our time. So we didn't get rid of this. So that one that I said, oh, hang on a minute, maybe that's it. That's not the right option because we've still got this up here. It's pulled up the fact that Haley has is trying to concentrate, but she's taken damage. So now it's asking Haley for a concentration roll that she passes. So that's so. What's happened here is we've cast Burning Hands. We've affected two people. It has automatically prompted them to make a saving throw to see if they avoid damage. They failed. Both of them have taken damage. You can see that from the health bar. And because Haley was concentrating on a spell, it's prompted Haley to make a concentration saving throw so that she can remain concentrating on her spell. And she passed that one. So that was a really good, you know, how these things have all integrated. And apart from clicking a few settings, we've not done anything. We've not written any macros and stuff, which is really, really good. Okay, now let's move on 
So this template should automatically disappear because it's a spell effect. And there it goes. Bosh. Done. Nundro's turn. Nundro is still blessed. Now, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, because that bless... Yes, so if we're looking on the right-hand side, if we hover over these, we can see that Nundro rolled a 1d20 plus 1, plus that extra 1d4 from Bless. Uh, and same with Haley. So those rolls were really, really bad for them to fail it, even with Bless on. So it has a try to apply Bless as well. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Nice. Very nice indeed. Now, we're not necessarily getting our pretty effects and things. Um, the template worked really, really well. Nundro's turn. Let's see if we can return that favour. Let's clear that chat. Okay, so that's gone. Nundro is going to return the favour uh, because he's obviously got spells himself. Now, I'm ignoring the fact that they're doing some of these things in, you know, within melee range, um, advantage, disadvantage. I'm ignoring some of the rules at the moment because I'm looking at the, the way it works. So if you're sitting there, you know, halfway through a sentence in the chat kind of going, oh, you can't do that without provoking an attack of opportunity. Um, yeah, whatever. Don't care. <laughs> Not for this purpose. I don't care. Let's Eldritch Blast that pesky wizard. Okay, so I have cast Eldritch Blast, and here are the potential defenses that we can that uh, we can put up here. I'm not sure how Featherfall is going to help in this. Let's go with Shield. Let's just see how it works. Boom. So now in the chat, Eldritch Blast. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We've got our graphic as well. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> distracted. I'm like a cat with a shiny thing. Okay, so we cast that Eldritch Blast. It made our attack roll automatically because we've asked it to. It then paused while it waited for Rombard to decide if it was going to react to that or not. Uh, we said yes. So it's then got, right, shield is now active. We have the shield effects here from 3.0 that we're not using because MIDI QOL with all the other bits and bobs have automatically applied, if we look at the character, we've got obviously this very obvious animation for the shield, but we also have a status effect. And if we double click his character, we can see um, he's used his reaction and he's got shield spell on, which is lasting one round. So, you know, he's chosen to use it in this case. Um, but we can also see that this, uh, this did still hit and we've done seven force damage and he's taken the damage. So that's a really nice way of seeing that reaction actually in place. It automatically casts the spell that went with that reaction and stuff like that. So that worked really, really quite nicely. I'm quite impressed with that, which is good. All right, so um, in Nundro's attack as well, just note that he had um, he, he had that, uh, that, that extra that plus three, plus two, plus one D4. So that all of these things are accounted for in here which is really really good um, <clears throat> now obviously what is uh, Rombar's normal AC is 10 plus 2 is dexterity so his normal AC is 12 with that shield spell of course it went up to 17 um, and as we can see that's so it's brought in that calculated for that shield spell so even though we've made the attack before that shield spell, it's done the reaction, it's applied the benefits of the shield spell, then calculated if that hits or not. In this case, it still hit. Um, and it was, as it turns out, a waste of a spell, waste of a reaction, didn't actually help. But that's exactly how we would want automated combat to work, isn't it? You know, we don't have to do hundreds of clicks. It's prompting us when we need to make a saving throw. It's prompting us about our reactions and stuff like that. That's really, really good. Uh, the last thing I want to do is, um, absolutely no offence, I want to kick the crap out of Haley. <laughs> Let's move on to Sorryman's round. Oh, did you see it just cleared the bonus, sorry, the um, because he'd used his bonus action, it's now his turn. It just cleared that used bonus action marker, which is good. So it's now his go. I want him to kick the crap out of Haley because I want to see if we can get this concentration to be removed and check that we are getting his um, his bonuses from his uh, his rage correctly. So clear chat again. Get rid of that. Um, let's make that attack. Uh, quarter staff. Um, how bizarre. So 
it's a quarter staff attack. Why is it asking for shield master evasion? That's totally not appropriate. That tells me it's a setup with the shield master evasion um, thing rather than um, specifically um, MIDI QOL and, and the reaction prompting thing. It seems to be that that is what's wrong. So again, I can have a look at that offline, see if I can fix that. Um, not many people take shield master for whatever reason. Don't know why. I think it's pretty damn useful in the right character build. Okay, because we didn't click that button while I was yammering, it timed out to say we're not applying that whatsoever. So what actually happened here? And the chat log will tell us everything that happened. So we had a quarter staff attack. We rolled a 19. That did hit and bypass Haley's AC. We did, again, it defaulted to the one-handed damage. That's fine in this instance. We did 10 damage. Um, that was enough to actually knock Haley unconscious. She's now down to zero hit points, so it automatically removed her concentration. So we didn't get a chance to make a concentration save for that one because she passed out. Therefore, concentration should be removed. So I wasn't expecting to see that, but that's actually a really useful thing to see, isn't it? Okay, so if they if they have to make a concentration save, it's prompting for it. If they make it, we get to still concentrate. If they fail it, we lose it. But if the character passes out, automatically comes off. If we've used a bonus action like we did for Sorryman, it will tell us we've used it. So it won't let us use it again. And then it will remove it on the next go. If we use a reaction like we did over here to cast shield, it tracks the fact that we've used our reaction. And I suspect if I just skip two turns, boom. Shield only lasts until your next round. We've lost our shield, but it's also removed the fact that we used our reaction for that, and we've gone back to a clean slate there. I think that's a really kind of good little um, good little demonstration of this working with a bunch of different spells and, and things like that. We're not getting a couple of things that I wanted, so Eldritch Blast. Uh, at the moment, I'm not getting things like, if I just quickly do... Not you, sorry, man. I want Nundro. Give me Nundro. Uh, things like Eldritch Blast. I'm not getting the animations and stuff like that. So again, it's something to look at. I don't think that's a... Relatively, I don't think that's a big problem. Um, we can sort those things out. But all this automated rolling is it's working for me. Might not be right for you. All right, guys. I'm going to clean these things up. Go and give Haley mouth to mouth and see if I can get her back on her feet. Um, I hope this has been kind of interesting uh, to kind of see this in action. A uh, little bit of fiddling, a little bit of tidying up a couple of things to do. But yeah, this is working for me. I'm liking this. See you guys. Take care.